Welcome to London's Book Club. We're here today to chat with a very talented French illustrator, Marie Lufour. She has a new show at the space called A La Piscine. It's all about that amazing feeling you get when chilling by the pool. Let's go chat with her. Let's take a dive. Marie Lou. Great to meet you finally. Great to meet you as well. We are here in the book club with your uh, new exhibition, uh, A La Piscine. Very well, very well done. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, so I just want to start off by asking, um, how did this project come about? Yeah, so initially the artwork was um, just a personal series that I started and I was always sort of daydreaming about summer, which is 75% of what I do. And um, I just did a couple of illustrations just for fun. And then Sky got in contact about doing a show here. And so I thought actually it could be fun to do, to continue that series and do something very summery, very fresh, very like exotic and hot in the middle of winter. So that it would break a little bit of the coolness and the greyness of London. I think you've done just that actually. <laughs> yeah, good job. Uh, Sky, this, Sky is now curating for the book club. Yeah, is that right? yeah, yeah. So this is her first project. Yeah, it was her first uh, exhibition here. And yeah, she did a really good job. She's really lovely to work with. I knew her from a few years back. She got in touch about having one of my artwork part of her show. And, um, and yeah, and so then she got back in touch with me about this. And it's really fun working with her. Yeah, nice that you're the first artist for this. Yeah new project of hers. Um, so please tell me about all the pieces you've made. So obviously there's murals, there's prints, so please tell us like how many things you made and how you made them. Yeah, um, well I did a series of, I think it was about 12 or 15 artwork on this. And then, you know, Sky was really saying, you know, I knew, I knew the space because I live just nearby and I've, ever since I lived in London, I've been coming to the book club and always seeing what people are doing with the space. And so I knew how much I could take over. So, um, yeah, I really wanted to do big murals and just brighten up the space as much as possible and really brand it into that series. Um, so, yeah, so we did four, four big murals and we painted almost all the walls that we could paint, some of the, like, um, circles and arcade and, yeah, and then had some prints and some tote bags. You have some artwork in the bathroom. I do, I do. How, how did that feel? Is that your first time to decorate a... <laughs> first a, time. A, a, yeah, first, <laughs> what was I going to say there? I don't know. First time to decorate a, a toilet establishment, uh, you know, yeah. yeah. It was completely also uh, unplanned. Because yeah. um, I had done the series and I had shown it to Sky and we met up um, at the book club, I think just after Christmas, and uh, we were looking at the space and I had done all the mock-ups and I was like, this is going to go here, this is going to here. And then I, you know, we just went by the toilet because she was showing me the paintings on the, on the doors. And we were like, you know what? Maybe a vinyl on the window could be, on the, on the mirror could be fun. And then, yeah, it was, actually, it was actually really fun. It was a little last minute detail that we added, but I'm very happy to customize any other toilets if anyone's interested. Um, how do you settle on your, like your color scheme? Like, do you plan it first on digital and then translate it into paint? Is that quite hard to choose the right pigment, the right yeah, tone? Yeah, it's a bit hard. Like, it's, and it's not something I have that much experience in because I do my work mainly digital and I've done some paintings, but um, I was a bit worried about the colors not matching and not matching with the prints. But actually, um, Sky got <laughs> all the colors in the world. And so with that, um, the Sunday before we prepped everything, we just did a lot of tests on, on the colors and then, yeah, we found the, the right ones. And then the colors for my work is, is, they're not always the same, but they're always very vibrant and very pop. And there's always going to be a red, a pink, a black and a white, and then it'll sort of vary depending on the series, but anything bright will do. How does it feel to see your work on such a large scale? Obviously, it's not the laptop or the iPad screen. It's yeah, it's really nice. <laughs> big. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, it's nice. Um, it's really nice. And I actually love having my work big. I think it works nicely. And when I did my previous show, I had a big, big uh, vinyl and I thought, okay, this, you know, this works actually quite well. So I really wanted to have another opportunity of having my work painted in big. And it's very refreshing to not have it just on the iPad or, you know, as a small print. It's, it's nice to see it bigger and really fill up a space and give it like a bit of a style. You're always known for illustrating female bodies. Yeah. Do you think um, if this was someone like me, for example, it would just be a bit too ugly, a bit too hairy? <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't quite work if I was in this position behind us right now. Well, you know, it could work, but yeah, I feel I, I'm more, 
I feel more related, obviously, to the female body and to, to representing women uh, in general. But then the sort of, you know, the feeling behind it is for everyone to relate to. It's, it's more like a state of mind than it is so much about the fact that they're women. But I just, I feel close to them because, yeah, because I am a woman and I feel it's something that I just love representing. And there's something about the curviness that I can really play around with my character that I really enjoy. Um, you mentioned state of mind, so what do you hope people will come away with from this, from this show? Is it kind of like that relaxed state of being by the pool? Yeah, that feeling of being off and just not thinking about anything and not worrying about anything and just enjoying the free time. That's something that I, like, I would like people to get, to get from that, especially now when it's pretty miserable. I mean, it's okay now today, but it's pretty miserable in London during the winter, so I think just a bit of peacefulness and a bit of feeling of sunshine would be good. Were there any specific pools, maybe from your childhood in beautiful France, or maybe something you visit regularly in London that inspired you, like got you in the mood for creating these pieces? Yeah, I mean, I just, I love swimming in general. I like, if I see water, I need to be in it, regardless of the temperature or the place. So I have a bit of a love relationship with swimming. And I have a, part of my family is from south of France from a very small village and my dad uh, has a house there with a swimming pool that I, I really love. And it's, yeah, it's the perfect, perfect place to escape. And I, I love going there just to like chill and not think about anything else. Would you say there's a particular culture around swimming in France? I was reading some articles about this. Is there yeah. something different between how the French swim and how the British swim? <laughs> I've never thought about that, maybe. Um, I guess swimming was a lot, a big part of my holidays when I was growing up, it was either going by the sea or getting a house that has a little swimming pool or even getting those like inflatable tiny swimming pool in our garden uh, just to have our feet in. Um, so maybe it's a French thing, I never thought about that. The Speedo is a French thing. Oh yeah. But yeah. we should not mention that too much. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> what do you like to do by the pool, ideally? Obviously there's two different kinds of pool. There's one where people go in the gym or this leisure centre and then there's a the one perhaps like <laughs> outside, you know, near the hotel or something yeah. a bit swanky. What do you like to do by a swimming pool? Yeah, not, not so much into the gym swimming pool. Like, yeah. is it, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm more into like being by the pool just to relax, uh, read, yeah, just put my feet in the water and just do nothing. I really like to do nothing actually now yeah. that I think about it, yeah. yeah. You mentioned reading. What's the perfect book to read by the water? That's a very hard question. For a long time, from when I was like 10 to 15, it was Harry Potter. Hey. Um, but <laughs> now, you know, not as, not as often. But I don't know, I quite like, um, I don't know actually, I don't have a type of book that I would recommend. I think any book would do, anything that would make your mind escape a little bit yeah. will do yeah. the trick. What about um, music? Like, what would be the ideal musical soundtrack to your show? <laughs> so if someone is enjoying this or maybe sitting by the pool and pretending they're yeah. The pool, what would be the ideal soundtrack? I think because I, I work a lot with just uh, Spotify's playlists, okay. so their chill vibes playlist yeah, yeah. would be perfect for that. Nice. But like barely any lyrics, just like instrumental and very chilled sounds. I think that would work. After this, what are your future plans? Obviously, you've got Pictoplasma coming up, yes. another new show possibly, if you want to talk about that. Yeah. What's coming next? Um, so Pictoplasma, yes, very excited about that. I've never been to Berlin before either, so I'm very, very excited to go. Uh, always a bit scary to do a talk, but I think, you know, the, the team seems really lovely and very, like, chilled, so I think it should be a nice experience. Um, and then I have another show that's coming up in... Um, actually, I have two shows coming up. One in uh, Dublin, uh, it's a place called Hen's Teeth, so there's a gallery there, so I'm going to be doing a show. And then I have a new show in London that should happen in June, uh, which should be quite exciting. There'll be big murals, potentially a very big figurine. Um, so yeah, it should be fun. Do you, for these kind of big scale projects, how it must feel very different to when you're doing something for a client? Yeah. You know, um, do you feel quite, you always feel quite excited to do it, or can it sometimes be a little bit overwhelming? Yeah, a bit of both. Like, it's very exciting because it's such a different process. It's so personal to do a show. You know, you're, you're really in charge of the whole thing from the start to the, to the end, which is sometimes not the case for client projects. Uh, and also it's your personal work, which is, you know, exactly what you want to show. Um, but then it's also quite... Uh, I think I never stressed too much before, but then the day it starts, or just the night before, I'll be like, fuck, <laughs> there's a lot to do. But you know, I, I like to be quite organized and I try not to leave a lot of space for, 
you know, uh, too much, too many errors, but then you never know how, how things could go. But I think, you know, it's a fun, it's a really fun process. I really enjoy it. Have you decided on the themes of the next two shows? Yes, I, I, I did actually. Um, I don't have the titles yet, but I mean, I do. The one in, uh, the one in Dublin is going to be called Daydream. It's based on the figurine that I made a few months ago. And so it's a series that, like, based on that first illustration, first piece of artwork. Um, and then the other ones is going to be very uh, flower themed. That's all. <laughs> well, I can say for now. <laughs> we'll keep that secret. Nice, well, we'll leave it there. Thank you, Mary Lou. Thank you so and, much. Uh, well done again with the show. Thank you. It's showing at the book club until May? Uh, yeah, 16th of May, yeah. So you still have a bit of time to come and have a look and have a beer. Nice. Or a drink. Yeah. Sounds good, yeah. Check it out. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.